And now, it's time for wrestling's hottest game show, The 30. Here's your host, referee ESO. Thank you for that intro, Joe, and welcome to Wrestling's Hottest Game Show, Da 30, where every week I challenge this group of elite wrestling experts with questionings on the happenings in the pro wrestling world. They are awarded points based on their answers, and the one with the most points at the end of the show is crowned Da 30, world champion. Now let's introduce the panel. First of all, to my right, we have the man... Yeah, I'm surprised he, he he's like the most decorated title holder ever in the 30. This is the the smartest man in the room. This is Dan Sebastiano. I mean, you, you put the finger up. You got to acknowledge me. The real champ is here. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I thought about, you know, I, I thought about having a, a a poem or some joke or something that would get me some points, but I wanted to keep it fair. So instead, I just surrounded myself <laughs> with cats, and and we'll go from there. Meow, meow. There you go. There you go. Now, across, across from him to my left, we have the honor of having the president of Thursday Nights in the room. This is Mr. Phil DeCessere. What's up, Phil? Hey, guys. Uh, I just want to give a two thumbs down to the commuters on Route 9 who were texting while driving. And Massholes! Oh, Massholes! They are, Joe, they are. By the grace of the Lord, I am here just in the next so the, time. The, there's some type of presidential immunity, but it is uh, Mr. President's fault that we're a couple minutes late. Well, that wouldn't go that far, Bruce. Like Actually, that, huh? as as my clock did the final seven o'clock ding here, this old grandfather clock, I was on. So <laughs> there you go. Just ding, made it, baby. Ding, I'm ding. blaming you. <laughs> anyway, next we have man of many talents. This guy's a podcaster. He's a poet. He's a player. He's Benny Scala. Thursday night, pros with the player. So for once, it's not going to be Lee Cole. It's going to be somebody else. And here we go. So of late, I have heard of Ronda Rousey. Her rhetoric falls somewhere between shit and lousy. She <laughs> whines about how WWE sucks, but she had no problem taking WWE bucks. Ronda Rousey, it looks like you're surely on track for a great gimmick change as Mrs. Ryback. Oh, oh no. Man. <laughs> Ooh, man, you end up re with the WWE. My, my <laughs> I got to get some points for that, right? Well, oh, we'll, yeah. we'll we'll talk yeah. about it. We'll talk about it. And they say party some bizoids on the bizord. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I love that cat, Dan. That that guy is awesome. Or that gal. All right. <laughs> well, Last but not least, we I have a man who needs no introduction. He is the thirty world champion. What a day. Joe Lowry. What's up, what Joe? A day, what, a, what a day. What a day. Hey, fresh off another episode of the Love Boat. We're setting the course for adventure, except my mind is not on a new romance. It's beating these guys that have no chance. That's right, baby. I come to play tonight. Let's do it. Ooh, Let's wow. Do it, you Let's know, I, throw them down. you got you got to respect pros from the interim champion. I mean, uh, current champion. So, <laughs> <laughs> and of right, course, guys. a shout out to the chat. The chat is alive and jumping as always. Thank you so yeah, much. It's for dropping, me. man. Yeah, it's yeah. Thursday night. Absolutely. Hey, guys, can you believe this is the official 26th episode of the 30? 26. Yeah. We are 16 episodes higher than My Mother the Car. Does anybody remember that show? <laughs> I remember hearing of it, though. <laughs> you know, it's, it's actually been a couple more than uh, than 26, but, uh, you know, we rebranded from This Week in Pro Wrestling over to the 30. And we've had a couple changes. You know, Michael Monty was the original host, and, uh, you know, I was down I was down in the corner where Joe was, and we had Farrow on, and, uh, you know, then we brought Dan on, we brought Joe on, and uh, I took over as, as referee and stuff. And uh, But, Phil? And uh, Benny, you guys have been here, and you haven't moved since day one. So why don't you talk a little bit about you know, the your original. experience here? Yes, sir. Yeah, go for well, it. Something keeps I tell you what, back, I was man. telling you on the <laughs> Go ahead, Benny. It's, it's, I, look forward to, I look forward to this all week long. This is, this is fun. This is great. I do believe that I was the champion crowned on Mike's last time hosting, right? Oh, you're the one who chased right? him off. Oh, is that what it was? Okay, yeah. Is that I won the title and he took off. He was like a promoter. He took the money and ran after I won. So, so yeah, Phil, what about <laughs> you? I mean, you've been here week after week. You haven't missed a week yet. 
You know, for me, it's like, you know, uh, I, I guess it would be like an athlete preparing for a game or training. If they don't have anything to, you know, a, an event to train for, they might not do it. So this keeps me watching everything, Bruce, keeps me attuned to the programming the best I can. A lot of programming to watch. And, you know, it really helps me stay on top of things, or at least to the best I can. And again, we're living in a time where there's so many distractions and just so much out there. This helps kind of keep you focused on, on the game game that I've loved since I was, you know, 10 years well, old. I'll tell you so. what I'm distracted at is that word you just used, a tune. A tune? Is that what you said? I, I might have. <laughs> I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name that a tune? Is that what you're trying to say? I'm going to name that a tune. Uh, uh, name it three notes. Uh, you, you know, Bruce, it, it's funny you say episode 26. That that means we're, we're, this, we're at 26 times that Joe's mentioned he went to school with Missy Beefcake. <laughs> <laughs> at least. You just elbowed your cat, Dan. I just saw that. <laughs> so, well, well Dan, uh, you've been pretty dominating your time on here. Uh, you, you know, how do you prepare so well every week? I mean, you're always ready for whatever's coming at you. Well, it's, you know, it's like the president said, you, you, you know, it keeps me watching. It keeps me interested. And uh, I just have to keep learning from the tricks, you know, because uh, if you guys remember when I won the title, my very first appearance, and then Benny messaged me and said that I wasn't needed next week, only to find out that I was and had been stripped of the title for no showing. Uh, so, you know, I, I uh, had to learn real quick how the game is played. I don't uh, believe it. Hey, baby cakes, five bucks in the chat. Nice going. All there. right. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Joe. Yes. Much obliged, wow. Joe. Awesome. Let's see that movie from, what is it, Coming to America? Although we like the kind that jingles, we'd rather have the types that folds. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll Joe, while, while, while we're talking about it, you know, tell us a little bit about your time on here. I mean, uh, how does it feel to come in second so often, but finally obtaining your, uh, your, your, your dream of getting the title? Oh, it's been an unbelievable experience. I actually love it. I mean, when Benny asked me to come on, and I said, sure. And then the first couple of weeks, I went to the well one too many times and came up short. But that third time's a charm, baby. But unfortunately, I scared Mr. Mike Monty off with that. So uh, that was his last show. So great memories here. I love being part of this crew. Uh, we have a ball on Thursday nights. We have a ball, it seems like, almost every night of the week on this channel. There's oh, yeah. always something going on. So uh, I love it. I love the people in the chat. And I just, I just love it here. This is a good time. Yeah, no Coach, place I'd rather be right now. Yeah, Co but, Cody and Sa Cody and Sammy got nothing on you finishing your story last week, Joe. <laughs> you no, know, we've got a new set coming with so with some new ideas and new stuff coming. It's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait to see what this uh, the next twenty six weeks are going to bring. So I see uh, the Venmo check to finally clear, and that's <laughs> new set coming. Nice. Listen, nice. listen. Enough about this reminiscing. We're going to take a quick break, and we come back. We're going to get ready for this serious battle for the title. We'll be right back. Right. You can be Let's... serious. And APB, American Protection Bureau, voted number one best on Long Island for all your security needs. Call 631-390-9050. That's 631-390-9050. APB. You need a body shop? You need engine repair? Auto excellence. Collision Specialist, 631-261-6420. That's 631-261-6420. Auto Excellence. Jimmy, I gotta take a dump. What? No, I mean I need a dumpster. <sighs> well, for all those needs, you need to call Big V Dumpster Rental. Long Island, New York, 631 900 dump. Hmm. Elm Logistics for all your logistic needs. Call 631 299 3595. That's 631 299 3595. Elm Global Logistics. Pride, performance, and partnerships. Hey everybody, and welcome back to the thirty. So, uh, you guys ready? Let's get let's get into this. Let's do this. Let's do it. Oh, we're not guys... doing like a special anniversary show here. We're just gonna talk. Oh, no, right. no, we've got to we, we've got to defend that title. Listen, no excuses there, champ. All right, all right, all right. You guys know the rules. 
Lying, cheating, foreign objects, and all other distractions are allowed and encouraged. Points are given for amusing comments, trash talk, talking, and bribery via Cash App, Venmo, PayPal. Credit cards are accepted, but there is a 10% service fee. 10%. And there was a question last week from uh, in, in the chat that if whether I take uh, the, the uh, gift cards, yes, I'll take them, but it's got to be the, the Visa uh, MasterCard or the Amex ones. I really don't want uh, any more Starbucks or Dunkin' or anything like that. So, you know, I will take those also. So uh, I, go, this, I have a bunch that have 2023 ex expiration dates. You want them? <laughs> no, it's, that, that's all right there. <laughs> so, all right, let's get into this. Uh, <clears throat> WWE, WWE has announced it will have a new title, the WWE Speed Champion. A few months yeah. ago, it was announced that WWE was bringing new content to the X platform. This is what it will be. It's an exclusive show called WWE Speed. Wrestlers will compete to pin their opponents in under five minutes. A tournament will be held to uh, crown the initial champion. Are you excited for this exclusive X show? Dan. Oh, it's gonna be your turn on the thirty. Good times. Oh, he gets to. Oh, wow. Dan, oh. you're on. All right. Uh, am I excited about this? Uh, no. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, who who wants to watch Twitter? I mean, it, I, the only thing I think this might actually carry is the number of people that can't stay up and watch Raw and SmackDown and NXT and and, ten, and plus AEW. They want fifteen hours of wrestling a week. I can go on. I called it Twitter. I'm not going to call it X. I can go on Twitter and watch a five minute match with a title. You know what? Maybe they get it, but honestly, I don't care. I don't see who this is for. I mean, who, what fans were banging on the door? Like, you know what you need W to be five minute matches on Twitter that we can watch real quick while we're, you know, driving, or maybe they, that's what uh, the people in front of the president were watching when they were driving home from work today. I don't know, but you, you've got some real garbage. I, I will say it's nice to see a title that means more than half of the belts that AEW has, but especially with the uh, marketing today, the WWE, I don't get it. I mean, who's going to be, who's going to be your, your Twitter champion, your <laughs> champion. Are you, is this going to be somebody like an R-Truth? Somebody's going to be the speed champion 75 times before they get rid of the belt. Or is this where they're going to elevate some young guy? Like, they, they can't figure out what to do with Braun Breaker. So he's a 17-time speed champion because, look, he, he's fast when he hits the ropes. Or, or are they just going to waste it on someone like Akira Tozawa and, and some intergender stuff where he loses the title to a returning Carmella? I mean, I don't know. I think this whole thing is a terrible idea. I think it's dumb. I don't see who it's for. I don't see how it's going to make any money, especially with X hemorrhaging money the way it is. No, bad idea. Oh. Good round. Good first round there. Wow. Lucky He's 13. coming for you, Joe. He's definitely uh, uh, definitely shooting for you. Brutal. Brutal. However. I see nothing on? changed this week. <laughs> hey, you're, you here, we, it has changed. changed. You're, you're holding the title there. Yeah, I know. I'm talking so, about the scoring. Bill, here you're on the 30. I'm ready, baby. You know, What's the champ going to say? Woo, I'm a three-minute man. <laughs> Ladies, I'm staying at the Marriott. Get in line. I can accommodate ten of you in, in a half hour, you know? I mean, really, isn't wrestling sped up enough as it is? I mean, we talk about the Russo era and the crash and burn TV with these skits that don't make sense. You know, we talk about episodic TV. I mean, you know. I just don't understand this. The matches themselves on TV are already hard pressed for TV time. What are they? Five minutes in length, six yeah. minutes without the commercials. So are yeah, these are really be longer action. You know, yeah, I'm I'm trying poor Benny out here, man. Yeah, um, <laughs> aren't we talking about getting back to things? I actually want to see. I want to see the slow championship. I want to see a story build. I want to see some drama. I do want to see some storytelling. Okay. I think we should be kind of going in the opposite direction, slowing things down and letting the fans have time to, to digest and absorb the action and actually maybe form bonds with some of these people. I mean, <laughs> at its heart, this, this is a spectator sport. It is a sport of personalities. I mean, it, it's, you know, and it's about emotion invested. You know, how can we keep up with things right now? The, even the commentators are hard pressed to, to call all the action. So, no, I'm not keen on the speed notion. I think it's just a silly thing. And uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to speed up and finish on time now. Thank you. Oh, wow. Wow. There Woo. is a God. There is a God. That's that awesome job. Awesome job, Phil. Wow. 
I love the three minute man. No, that that's going to be the quote of the night right there. That was thank you, thank you. So thank Phil, you, you know what? Just because you finished on time for once, I'm going to just give you two bonus points. Nice. Hey, there is a miracle. Love it. <laughs> nice. Listen, guys, come on. How much time does this guy usually eat up? <laughs> that is true. That is true. The 30 participation trophy. You get extra points for doing what you're supposed to do. <laughs> right. He is the there president, you, you know. That's true. For the yeah. first time since week one, Phil is in the lead. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Nice, nice. Let's get a timer up. It looks like uh looks like the player's up next. All right. The player. Player, you're on to 30. All right. Well, you know, earlier Joe said uh, he was having a ball, and that reminds me of a joke. Uh, two cannibals were talking to each other, and one cannibal said, how you doing? And the other cannibal said, I'm having a ball. And the other one said, well, slow down. You're going too fast. Um, <laughs> oh. So, you know, this reminds me of the Jerry Seinfeld episode. Uh, I'm sure you guys remember Donna Chang from Queens. Yes. And uh, she uh, she said, it's it's ridiculous. And then Jerry hesitated for about 15 <laughs> seconds. And said, did, did you say ridiculous? <laughs> um, and that's that's what this whole speech thing. I, I had never heard of it until you just said it. But like that was the first word that that came into my mind. Like, it's absolutely ridiculous. Like, what does that prove? I mean, what I guess my question is, yeah, so the guy who wins in four minutes and 18 seconds, uh, you know, that that's great for them. But what, what does it do to the person who loses in four minutes and 18 seconds? Kind of buries him, doesn't it? I, I don't know. I mean, what is the value of this? I mean, it, when did wrestling ever, when did a, a time factor ever, ma- you know, matter in wrestling? It's not, always, wrestling is not about time. I mean, it, everybody's going to watch and think every, you know, every uh, pinfall, is going to be it. that's it, you know, and it's just it changes the way you have to watch it, and I'm I'm not a fan. Ah, right on time! Wow, you guys are hitting that perfect. Nice job, Benny. Nice right. job. Wow, good scores. Uh oh, the heat is on. The heat is on. The heat is on. <laughs> Joe, you're on the thirty. Uh-huh. All right, folks, how many times can we reinvent the wheel here? I mean, is this not similar to the 24-7 championship? I mean, everybody was getting pinned left and right in that thing. And, of course, don't we already have the Heritage Cup in NXT? Don't they have, like, five minutes to secure, secure so many pinfalls in that amount of time? I don't know. I don't buy it. I don't. I, I think so, this sounds like a boardroom decision, not a wrestling fan decision. That is for damn sure. Um, and by the way, what kind of advertisement are we going to have during these speed matches from the makers of Adderall? We present a speed match. I mean, come on, folks. This this makes absolute zero sense. And that's why they're going to try it out on social media to see if anybody has the attention span to watch it. Because basically, no one's going to watch it live. They're going to put these pre-recorded matches out there. They're probably going to give uh, the women even less time to do the speed matches because they have, like, no time to do their matches now as it is. I'm not a big fan of this. Why? Because wrestling is about storytelling. What kind of story can you tell in four minutes and 59 seconds? Not a lot. So basically, if I were to go into a speed match, I would probably just take like some big ass anvil and just knock somebody out and pin them as many times as I could, because that's probably about about the amount of excitement you're going to get with that. Not a huge fan. Don't like it at all. We already have the Heritage Cup. That's something very similar. This would be remnants of the 24-7 title again. They might as well just bring that back. Not a fan. I'm out of time. I don't care. That's all I have to say about that. All right. Joe's forfeiting a few seconds there, but he still did pretty good. Nice job. 13 points there. So oh, well. my, I don't know if you guys saw some of the matches. Some, some of them have been recorded. And honestly, they're, they're stuff that would have been on an old Sunday night heat. So I don't see yeah. how this is going to draw people over to Twitter or a new platform at all. It's, it's crazy. I, I mean, I, you think to uh, uh, Goldberg Lesnar at Mania, their second match was only about five minutes, and it's probably <laughs> the most exciting and best five minute match I've ever seen in my life. But that had build and character and people that it worked with. Go watch a three minute match between you know Omos and uh, you know local talent number four. Yeah. And, yeah. And who gives a shit? No, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But then again, I mean, there are so many matches on the, the main shows that don't even run five minutes, especially the women's ones. So yeah. just watch Raw. 
<laughs> so, all right, guys, let's get on to the next question. So Hulk Hogan is at it again, reiterating questionable stories of his past. We all know but that before wrestling, Terry Bollea was a bass musician. He's made claims about uh, hanging up his tights and playing bass with Metallica. Uh, and then he vir two virtually uh, begging Mick Jagger to play with the Rolling Stones. What do you think of this? How do you think Metallica would look with Hulk Hogan on bass? And what is your favorite Hulk Hogan exaggeration of all time? Looks like, Mr. President, you're on to 30. Wow, man. Go. Yeah, all right. Well, geez, this sounds like something out of, I don't know if anyone knows who James Thurber is. He's a writer and author. He was known for his short stories. Oh, yeah. And uh, he did one particular short story called The Secret Life of Walter Mitty about this guy who's just daydreaming all the time. Kind of like our uh, current president. I'm not talking about myself as the president of Thursday night. He seems to have done everything, has been everywhere, and uh, occupied every occupation. Um, yeah, I don't know what this is. Is this CTE? Is this just the excesses of the 80s now coming out? Um, I, I, where do we begin with the exaggerations, right? 700-pound Andre the Giant? You know, maybe that's not out of the ballpark entirely, although that is quite a stretch, too. Um, they come so fast, it's really hard to really discern uh, what is the wildest tale. But um, feel bad for the Hulkster, I think, too. I mean, you know, obviously this is a kind of a plea for attention, I think. And uh, um, I think he's running for office now. I mean, this is the logical next step, you know? Maybe he'll be uh, plagiarizing famous speeches. I don't know. Uh, he's already uh, appropriating several uh, untruths to, to himself. So I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a, a, perhaps a career in politics, maybe mayor of Tampa, maybe a state senator, maybe eventually a U.S. senator. Who knows? It could go anywhere, really. So Oakster for office, baby. Let the exaggerations continue and run wild. Ooh. All right. Oh, nice right. job, Phil. Yeah. So that means he's what? He's 72 now, right? 71, yep. 72. Wow. So that means he's got about another 10 yeah, years and he can run for too president. He's young to be president. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, he's got, he's got to age a little bit. Yeah. 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 All right. So it looks, let's see who's up next. Looks like Playa. Playa, you're next on the 30. Playa. All right. Here we go. Well, let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> so according to Hulk, he came within a Mrs. Bubba the Love Sponge's public hair. It's, it's actually public hair because everybody's seen it now, of uh, playing <laughs> the bass for either Metallica or the Rolling Stones. Now, I have no idea if this really happened, but if it did, kudos for both of these iconic bands for uh, staying true to their art and saying no to this blonde-headed Eddie Van Halen jabroni wannabe. So, but I do have to give Hulk his due because he, you know, he did go on to invent uh, feng shui and the detachable penis, not to mention marrying seven other blonde tomato cans with a combined age of 89 and a combined IQ of, well, 89. <laughs> uh, no, it, 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 in, in true transparency, though, I, I've always liked Hulk. I always will. You know, I, I do have the feeling that after you work your way past 127 layers of bullshit, that there's actually a, a pretty decent guy inside. But Hulk, do us all a favor and enough with the stories, brother. But Probably. yeah, I, I just, you know, I, I, I that analogy of uh, of uh, Walter Mitty is with from Phil is spot on. I mean, just you know, the stories just getting the game getting more and more wild as he gets older and older. I mean, God only knows what's going to happen when he hits his 80s. Right on. Nice oh, job, nice. Benny. Although if you did say brother in that horrible way one more time, I was going to deduct a point, but all otherwise right. pretty good. That was pretty good. All right. <laughs> Joe. Yo. Looks like you're going to be next on the 30. Are you ready for this? No, I guess I'm as ready as I'll ever be. All right. Are you like Rudy? You were born ready? Born ready. Go. <laughs> I'm like Helen ready. No. <laughs> so uh, some of the far-fetched stuff that Hulk Hogan said in the past. I mean, I, I, the one I recall that was pretty famous was that he once wrestled 400 days in one year. So that was kind of neat right there. So, I, you know, <laughs> um, he once played for the New York Yankees. I heard the Metallica story. I love the fact that he drank uh, something like 6,000 beers with John Belushi before WrestleMania, too. 
that was a good one as well. Uh, but I think his biggest botch was at WrestleMania 30 when he didn't know The Rock or Stone Cold was going to show up. So, I mean, you know, this is, yeah, I, I go with Phil here and Benny. I, I really think he's been dropped on his head one too many times, even though a guy that big, you wouldn't think he would suffer from CTE, but I think he's taken one too many sh- chair shots. There's no doubt about it. But playing for the New York Yankees, like, really? Like, where did that come from? How would how do you even go go there? I just don't understand that at all. Uh, to say that you're a professional wrestler one day and then you play for the New York Yankees the next. And he had, and of all the teams he picked was the New York Yankees. He couldn't pick like the Tampa Bay Lightning. Or, oh, wait, Tampa Bay Lightning wasn't around then. I'm sorry, the Tampa Bay uh, Devil Rays wasn't around then. I have hockey on my mind. Sorry, it's all hockey in Boston. So nonetheless, um, yeah, Hulk Hogan, is, he's, tr- he's living on borrowed time is basically what's going on here. He's going to run for office. Well, he's, he's old enough now to run for office. Matter of fact, he'd probably be one of the youngest people in office if he ever did win an election. But, um, yeah, sorry, Hulkster. Uh, I'm not buying it. Nice job, Joe. We got a three-way tie. That's never happened. Uh-oh. A three-way tie? Three-way tie. Oh, she said. That's what she said? Benny, come on. You can say oh, that. Hey oh, now. hey. Well, let's, <laughs> you if, do it. if anybody can break this up, it's this man. Dan Wait, you always say that to me. Cat. Oh, I love this. Uh-oh. He's going for extra points. Go, Dan. <laughs> line scarf. All right. Uh, you know, it's funny when you talk about the biggest lies and the worst lies from Hulk Hogan, they all have to do with the fact that he always seems to forget how time works. Jo- uh, Joe mentioned it perfectly. He said he wrestled 400 days because traveling across time time zones added extra time because he didn't know the difference between time zones and time travel. He claimed he partied with Jim Belushi in 86, despite Belushi dying in 82. My personal favorite Hulk Hogan lie was the stories he told about Elvis coming to watch him in Memphis, even though Elvis died several years before Hulk Hogan started wrestling. But, you know, that's one of those little nuances. He's also been on a plane with uh, he, he was on the he was on the plane with Kerry Von Erich right before he, he died, which was bullshit. Uh, <laughs> he told a story at one point that made it sound like he was in the locker room when Bruiser Brody was murdered. And I believe he said he called he referred to Bruiser Brody as having his throat slit or being shot. Yes. Which he didn't even realize how that worked. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole story with the with the George Foreman grill. That's not exactly uh, up to par with how that that went down. Uh, but Benny did hit the head nail on the head, though. You'd listen and you, the. Uh, the Brutus Beefcake, Dark Side of the Ring, they talked about how Hulk Hogan took care of some of the guys. He literally had people sleeping on his couch, sleeping in, you know, in his driveway. Like, he's there for you. He, he believe Beneath all the bullshit is not a bad guy, but it is literally all bullshit. Everything he says, it, almost to the point where you hear him tell stories, and it's like I, you, you have to take it with a grain of salt or double-check everything or just dismiss it like crazy old grandpa telling you stories about the war he didn't fight in. <laughs> Good stuff. Nice Good job. job. Really nice job, oh, Dan. Yeah. Plus, I gave you two, the cat got you two points, though. Hey, I'll take it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you, you had already taken over the lead, and then the cat got you those bonus points. But I love hey. that. All right, guys, listen. Let's take a quick break, and when we get back, we're, we were supposed to have an elimination now, but I, I can't eliminate anybody because I got a three-way tie. So after Uh-oh. the next question, two people are out of here. So All right. let's take a quick break, like, and when we get back, we'll take care of that. I feel like Pat Thai. The Monty and the Pharaoh Show is brought to you by... Because wine is your second favorite four-letter word. California wine, New York attitude, good fucking wine. Yeah. Tired of that. Same old, same old breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Same old tasting scrambled eggs, burger, that dinner steak, ribs, or pork chops. Why not add a little bit of spice or just a touch of heat to make the difference? Change that scrambled egg with a little bit of Johnny Fabulous's John Cena Sr.'s Million Dollar Jalapeno Hot Sauce. Great on burgers, steaks, chops, and those barbecued ribs. And Nitro's Garage for all your automotive needs. Call 646-675-2349. That's 646-675-2349. For all your automotive needs, Nitro's Garage, ask for Jack.
Do you treat your dog as part of the family? <laughs> well, so do we. So why not celebrate your pup's birthday with the ultimate party box? Check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Party Pup Info, and let us make your pup's party or any celebration perfection. M&J Video Games and Collectibles. Sport and non-sport cards, wrestling items, autographed items. We buy, sell, and trade. M&J Video Games and Collectibles, located at 1049 Queen Street, Southington, Connecticut. Call us at 1-860-479-9223 or 860-93-GAMES. M&J Video Games and Collectibles. Hey everybody, welcome back to Wrestling's Hottest Game Show, the number one game show. As if you look at our graphic, it's the one pound game show uh, that's out there. Uh, I'm What A Day Joe, joined by the player, Phil, Dan, the striped zebra in the middle, of course. And we got to give a shout out to the chat here. These guys have been rocking and rolling. Maria, RJ Hudson, Don the Baba. Uh, looks like Farrell in the house. Everyone's talking about cats. Um, I guess I screwed up the Jim Belushi versus John Belushi statement. Thank you for uh, uh, Don the Bobber for that one. But everybody in there, RJ Hudson, thank you guys so much. And um, let's uh, resume this game, shall we, Mr. Referee? All right. All right. Sounds good. Oh, oh Listen, yeah. recently Becky Lynch was on the MMA Hour and so, had some tea to spill on the uh, WWE mishandling Ronda Rousey, stating that she couldn't wrestle at the start. She insinuated that the only reason Rousey's debut at WrestleMania 34 was so good was that it was well rehearsed and Triple H and Stephanie had vested interest in making her succeed. What do you think of this revelation? Was R Rousey overrated as a wrestler or is this just jealousy from uh, the man who, couldn't, who wouldn't be able to make it in MMA? So let's see, who do we have? Benny. Looks like you're up Benny, on the 30. Benny in the Jets. No. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I think the man nailed it. I, I, I never thought much of Ronda Rousey uh, as a wrestler. I mean, she came in with a lot of hype. Um, what, what was the first thing? I think she did a, a judo toss to a Triple H. Uh, and, I mean, that looked great. But, you know, she was – she's an athlete. And there's a huge difference, in my opinion, between an athlete – and a, a a sports entertainer. I mean, she definitely had the you know the the athletic part of it down pat, no doubt. But she wasn't. And I, I my opinion, I I think she should have been a heel from the get go. I mean, she had you know too much hype as a baby face. She doesn't. She never struck me as a baby face. She struck me as somebody who should always be a heel, you know, or maybe like you know start as a heel and switch baby down the road. But I I think she overrated i mean of course she came in with a lot of hoopla but i just i don't think she ever felt comfortable herself and i think it showed um they they pushed her to the moon they paid her a gazillion dollars i think they gave her every possible um push and opportunity so i mean why now she has sour grapes i have no idea it's you know it really is you know tr truly biting the hand that feeds you so no, I think Ronda, you know, Ronda was very overrated, and uh, I think Becky nailed it, honestly. Good stuff. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Nice job, Benny. He's in the lead. B -b -b Benny in the Jets. Who do we have next up? Next up, it looks like Joe. Joe. Joe, Joe, Joe. Joe, you're on to 30. Joe, what do you know? All right, so I feel like I've been talking about Ronda Rousey and her book excerpts since uh, the excerpts started coming out. If she launches a few more excerpts from the book, why buy the book? Because we'll just have everything we need there. Let's let's just uh, call it what it is. Ronda Rousey was over before she set foot in the ring. So, I mean, that debut at WrestleMania where she speared Triple H and all that stuff, that was well rehearsed and so forth. But what, everyone's missing the big thing here. She was damaged goods by the time she got to the WWE. She left UFC, retired from UFC. Why? She was on concussion. She had concussion-like symptoms. So you're going to go from that, and she hid that, uh, nonetheless, to, from WWE officials, 
and went ahead and, and pursued this career in sports entertainment. I think once she realized that she was over without getting in the ring and, and she had to keep staying over, she had to put the work in. And I think that's where she failed because then it was the jujitsu character and all that stuff. Really not a whole lot of wrestling background if you look at some of her matches outside of the kicks and the punches and all that stuff. But other than that, it was breaking Stephanie's arm. It was doing this. Her matches were okay, and but she was over and she was well paid for it. And she has nothing but to thank but Triple H and Stephanie McMahon for that. Now, of course, she's disgruntled now because she's seen the light. She's seen the sexual harassment firsthand inside the locker room. She now gets to speak on behalf of the people that are still in the WWE, namely the women. She can do that. She said she's not going back. So what is she going to do? She's going to spill some dirt. Of course she is. And as Bruce Pritchard says, she is in book selling mode. And that's exactly what you do is yep. spill the dirt. Nice. Nice Good job. job. Nice job. So it's going to be, uh, we got two more left. It looks like, Phil, looks like you're going to be up next on the 30. You think you're going to be able to pull this one off? We need, I let's know see. It. That's what she said. <laughs> okay. well, after this, we're going to know somebody who's, who's leaving for the night. So, Phil, you're <laughs> on the 30. Let's get you in the scene and go. All right. Well, you know, you take away the endorsement from and the association with judo gene labelle god rest his soul and you take away the endorsement uh from the late great rowdy rowdy piper and with that of course the shirt and the leather jacket and all of that you take away the joan jett song i don't give a damn about my reputation <laughs> and you know you start to look at it and what are you left with and you know the guys made reference to the she was already on a concussion protocol or she might have been hiding them she furthered her concussions by being struck stephanie gave her a slap across the face in one instance and created that uh, another concussion as a result and i don't say that as a critique but i do say that as an observation that yeah she came in maybe not at 100 percent, you know uh, she's not the largest athlete in the world either. I know she, you know, is a very talented, obviously very skilled in the art of judo, Olympic level. Um, but does that translate into wrestling? I don't know. Taz made it work really well back in the day in ECW. But, you know, when you, when you look at everything and you take everything out of there, the art of professional wrestling, is it there? Is she creative? Does she use the canvas like an artist would? Uh, does she garner sympathy? She came in, you know, really as almost um, unbeatable. I admit I, I really enjoyed Shayna Baszler taking her out too. Uh, but when all is said and done with her, more is said than done. So um, that's all I have to say about her. Dun, dun, dun. Drum roll, dun, dun, dun. Play, I'm Ooh. sorry. Oh. Oh. All right. Uh, Mr. President, we'll I wouldn't get too comfortable because this next guy only needs uh Bruce, oh. I know he, I know he's in your hip pocket, so I'm not too comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a stripe, you know. I think you got his t-shirt on under that striped shirt, but <laughs> for the love of Christ. Somebody Ten called four. somebody. <laughs> he is uh, an appealing young man, I will say. Uh, listen, the he's guy comes prepared week weekly. And he's got Wonderful the cats. Boy. Boy. That's, the cat. That's the key, the cats. All right, Super Dan, power. you're on the 30. <laughs> Go. All right, yeah. Uh, I, you know, it's funny when you talk about it because Ronda Rousey, her rookie year, when she first jumped that barricade at Mania because The Rock, which I love that line, when he, st you know, when he brought her in the ring, he said, The Rock is not going to hit a woman, but I have a friend who'd be more than happy to, and she took Stephanie out, and The Rock beat up Triple. That was great. Her rookie year was probably one of the best – most and i mean maybe not quality of matches although she did have some good ones best they've ever presented a rookie in year one rookie of the year without question absolutely phenomenal rookie season and i and you could tell she was enjoying herself by the time she came back it, it, it wasn't quite the same there was something missing when she came back in the rumble she had some moments in the tags with with shana basil but it was obvious she was in it for the money she could care less they, the fact that they didn't really promote her and Baszler's match as UFC or excuse me, ultimate fighter rules or whatever it was just garbage. And yeah, she, I can understand. She's got some sour grapes. She probably got mishandled. She was probably bitter at the end. Maybe Vince, by that point, they stopped caring about her. They weren't going to push her as this undefeatable super force. She was just another one of the girls. And when it came to her actually having to be one of the girls in the locker room and be a wrestler instead of a, a main event, superstar special attraction, 
all of a sudden it lost its interest. Maybe it's sour grapes, maybe not. I don't know. We none of us were there. Um, I agree with what she said about McMahon being a sleaze ball and Lauren Itis being a sleaze ball. But yeah, she she had her moment in the sun when it when she had to actually work for it. All of a sudden she's mad. <laughs> Finish right on the spot. Nice job, Dan. Forty one. Nice. Uh, ah. Jeez. Nice. Well, you know what that means? That means we gotta say goodbye to a couple people. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. Oh, that was a twofer. So, first of all, that was a twofer. That was a twofer. I yeah, we gotta get out of here. Said, yeah. So, uh, Mr. President, around anymore. I know you uh, you want to get to your salad because I know you just got home, so I know you're hungry. So uh, we'll talk to you later. Good salad, job, guys. Salad, Thanks, Bruce. Steak, salad, steak, salad, steak. Perhaps both. <laughs> Bye, guys. All right. Playa. One hell of a fight tonight. This was a close one. Nobody really, there was yeah. no runaway winner. And that was even with some bonus points. You know, so. one of the, that, Bruce, one of the best things about the 30 is there is always next week. Absolutely. Absolutely. Playa, we'll talk to you in a bit. Love that lava lamp. Love that <laughs> lava lamp. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I'm going to quickly reset this score. Let's see. You got to Got ourselves a rematch from uh, last Back week. to zero. It's Rudy Diamond again. All right. So let's see. Get Joe. Get him down to a zero. Let's get Dan. <laughs> Benny said they turned the tables on me. They turned the tables on me. All right, guys. This one's uh, this one's for the marbles. So uh, marbles. WWE WrestleMania. Two weeks out. What's your take? We got the build up. What are you looking forward to? And when are your bathroom breaks? Dan, since you're the challenger, you're going up first. All right, let's do it. Dan, you're on the 30. All right, Mania. You know what? I know it sounds cliche, but Mania 40, biggest Mania ever. I'm really excited about it, and I mean that because they've got a lot of good matches I'm looking forward to, but more importantly, these last few weeks, Raw and SmackDown have been phenomenal. I have not missed a minute. When I'm sitting through Raw for three hours, despite being tired, and I'm still interested to the last second, Raw hasn't done that in ages. As far as the matches, Cody Roman, absolutely looking forward to that. I think they're going to have a great story in the tag match. My prediction is it ends with Rock pinning Cody, and then Cody has to fight from underneath again. McIntyre and Seth Rollins. The, the Intercontinental title match, really, that's a great story. Gunther could have a good match with a mom, so he doesn't need Sammy, but great stuff anyway. I Even though I'm not a big fan of the multi-man matches, I'm really looking forward to the tag team title match because you've got a lot of good tag team talent and some individual talent that have proven themselves in tag matches. Every step of the way, they've just been building good matches, good matches, good matches. Bailey finally turning face, winning the title back is going to be a huge win. Assuming she wins, I hope she does. And I really think she comes out with her Bailey buddy entrance again. Uh, you know, you might have a surprise return, might have a surprise debut. Who knows? CM Punk on commentary in the McIntyre match is going to be gold. Women's match, Becky and Rhea probably going to be match of the night, depending on what night they're on. I'm, I, I can't think anything right now that goes, oh, my God, that's going to be my bathroom break moment. Maybe the concert or the backstage interview. <laughs> wow. Wow. wow nice good one. job. One Jesus. Of... Jesus. Christmas. Let's see. So let's see if Joe can pull this one off. Joe, are you ready? I guess I'll be as ready as I'll ever be. Yeah, this one isn't that hard. 14, you got it. Yeah, that's right. I've never got 14 points in my life. <laughs> You're on the 30. All right, so we can go down the whole entire card. So for LA Knight versus AJ Styles, and Metza Metza, Jimmy versus uh, Jay, brother versus brother. Looking forward to that match. I think there'll be outside interference in that one as well, too. We still don't know the final participants for the six-pack ladder match for the undisputed tag belts, so we'll have to wait and see for that. Uh, triple threat match, Logan Paul, Randy Orton, KO. Um, look for the upset. I'm going RKO, holding the title one more time. So see what happens. Gunther versus Zane. I see nothing happening there. I think Gunther is going to beat Sami Zayn, no matter how much Chad Gable tries to help Sami Zayn. Uh, Rhea Ripley versus Becky Lynch. That'll be your torch passing match right there. Rhea Ripley over Becky Lynch. Io Sky Bailey. Of course, Bailey's going to get it. Uh, but there might be some outside interference with that as well, too. Uh, Seth versus Drew McIntyre. Is it time for Drew McIntyre to hold the title in front of an actual live audience as opposed to when he did in COVID? 
We shall see. I think Seth Rollins might get hurt first night one with the Rock and Roman Reigns and Cody and Seth. Um, I do believe that Cody and Seth are going to lose that because the bloodline will be involved with Reigns versus Rhodes. I think Rhodes is going to come out on top. I think the story will finally be written. But the biggest question is, what do we do after all this is said and done? The Rock's going to be nowhere to be found after this because he has to go to film a movie. So we're going to have that big Rock letdown after he appears this week on Raw. So what? So what happens after that? Who knows? They have Saudi Arabia, and I'm sure it's hell going to figure that Roman Reigns will be taking a vacation. Fast twenty six. Wow. <laughs> nice job, Joe. We got a tie. I got to. I got to tell you. If it, it, you got an extra point for being able to get through that whole thing without without taking a breath, I mean that was. <laughs> okay. There you go. So listen, <laughs> looks like we got your co-champions this week. We can't be upset with that. Way to go, guys! Nice job. Let's bring the other two guys back in. We're gonna get Gene Tunney here. Gene Tunney's gonna have to do something about this. Jack Tunney. Jack, Jack Tunney. Hey, Tunney. He, uh, Tunney. that's the second time he's gotten a name wrong. Minus one. <laughs> oh, looks like we lost Phil. So Phil, Phil's out eating. So we'll close him back nope. up. But Benny, you know, uh, good to Shoot see you. Again. Nice job. You know, Dan, Joe, co-champs. Way to go, guys. Co-champs. We'll take it. I like it. Love you Another guys. Another great show, guys. This has always been fun. I mean, twenty-six. That's that once a week. That's half a year. We're we're mm-hmm. just banging along now. Chat's yeah. been great and there growing. Yeah, love it. Yeah, I can't wait to I can't wait to debut that new set. That's going to be a lot of fun. And That's you guys got to make sure up. you like and subscribe. We got to get our, our subscribers and our our members up there. Like you got to hit the like button, subscribe button right there in the bottom yeah. of the screen. No, yeah, you said we have to get our members up. <laughs> you always got to get your members up. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just, I quick shout shout out in the chat, uh, Bruce. Le- loose loose cannon said you had one job to pick a winner and you did this <laughs> you just had one job one job, one job. One. all one we job. need is one pin yeah. rodney just one pin yeah, it's it's that one pound <laughs> show <laughs> there you go all right listen on behalf of this uh, this illustrious panel this is eso and we're going to get out of here thanks guys for, for stopping by we'll see you next week come on <laughs>